we said one of the models for inter-process communication is shared memory. So the shared memory, as the name implies, is a uh, part of memory that's shared between two or more processes. So that uh, part of memory appears in the other space of uh, all those uh, processes that are sharing that piece of memory. Uh, the one nice thing about shared memory is when you try to access the memory, uh, you don't need to go through the operating system, as in the case of uh, messaging systems, as we dis uh, as we have seen, and we'll be discussing in more detail soon. Uh, but it is already in the other space of that process, so it can directly access it. So this makes the use of shared memory a very fast mechanism for uh, inter-process communication. However, uh, it is very important that when two or more processes are making use of the same memory space, they are not doing it at the same time in most cases because it is possible that while you're trying to read it, somebody else is changing parts of it, so it will cause significant inconsistency. So we say the shared mem memory is under the control of the user process, However, these processes need to synchronize, but that synchronization again will be provided by the operating system. Now, this seems to be eating up the uh, benefits provided, but note that you do the synchronization once in a while, but once you start synchronization, for some time you can access the memory many times one after another in a very fast manner. Okay, so although the start thing of the uh, synchronization and the ending of the synchronization required operating system intervention, so it's uh, as slow as in the case of uh, message queuing, for example, in between, you can access this memory many times and that will be very fast. So in total, using shared memory will be faster than message queuing, which we will discuss next, okay? So that's the advantage of uh, using shared memory. The disadvantage is the synchronization process is a little bit more tricky. Uh, so it requires that you're very careful because if not, you might end up with deadlocks as we will be discussing in chapter five in detail. But just keep in mind that uh, in the case of shared memory, once you get the access to the uh, memory space, using it is much faster compared to the case of message queuing. So, uh, some example use of uh, inter-process communication and the most frequently used one uh, in uh, Linux and uh, Mac OS systems is uh, through the POSIX uh, API interface. Uh, okay. So in POSIX, first you need to create the shared memory segment, okay? So to create that, you use the SHM, which stands for shared memory, SHM underscore open function, okay? This is provided in the POSIX uh, API. Actually, you use the same function also to make use of an existing uh, shared memory segment. So the way we do it is, this is just like opening a file. Remember, you, in, uh, while opening a file in C, you say file descriptor becomes open in parentheses, the name of the file to be opened, the mode in which you're opening it, and the permissions. It's, it's exactly the same thing. So we first have a variable. Let's call that uh, shared memory file descriptor. It, it's actually just a variable name, so you can define anything there. The important thing here is, you should say shared memory open. That's the name of the API function. The first argument is name, which is the uh, name that you're going to refer to uh, that with. And then here you have uh, the mode in which you're accessing it. For example, uh, if you say or create, it will always create that uh, shared memory uh, segment, okay? 
in this example, for example, we say O create, then remember that pipe sign? Remember it means the bitwise OR operation? Remember that in C for regular OR operations, you have the pipe sign twice, that is regular OR. For the bitwise OR, we use the pipe sign once. So you actually, when you uh, use that bitwise OR, you're setting both the O create bit and the O read write bit, uh, both of them, so that what it means is if it does not exist, create the shared memory segment and open it as read write. If it already exists, just open it as read write. But in both cases, you will have uh, you will open it as read write. But if it does not exist, exist, it will also be created. And if it's to be created, it will be created with these permissions. Now, what does that permission uh, mean? Uh, remember, uh, since we use zero here as the leftmost bit, that means octal representation. Remember, uh, octal is base eight. Okay, so uh, when you open it this way, Actually, 6 is what? In binary, 6, now, octal, uh, uh, 6 corresponds to, in binary, 110. This is how we write it. So you have 666, six, six. so it's 110, 110, 110. This is a typic Unix file permissions. This is, remember, these are like, this is for the user or the owner. Okay, this is for the group, everyone in your group, and this is for the world, which means all other people. Okay, so for the owner, these are remember read, write, execute. That means, now forget about the memory for a moment, just look at it as if it's a regular file. If you set the read bit, it means that. Uh, entity, in this case that's the owner, has a read per permission to that file. Write bit means you also have the write permission. And execute means if it's an executable file, either a binary uh, executable code or maybe a script, that entity, in this case owner, has the permission to execute it. For example, uh, if this were a file, since the execute bit was not uh, set, you could read the content, you could modify the content, but you cannot run it. Now, the same permission is here, in this case, given to the group and the world. Okay? And uh, the owner is the owner of this process. Okay? Like, uh, if, you're, uh, if I'm running my own program, I would uh, be the owner. Now, if I give you permission to execute the program I have written, although I own the file, it was written by me, when you're running it, it will be running with your permission, so owner would still be you. Group is, in Unix you can set up groups, for example, we could have student group, instructors group, staff group, whatever, so uh, it could be that I give everyone in my group read permission, and anyone else, no permissions. So these are all uh, defined by these permissions. So in this example, uh, when we, we're giving read and write permission to the owner, to the group, and to the world, actually. So everyone actually can read and modify it. Typically, of course, you wouldn't be uh, doing it this way. For example, you would set, I can read and write, okay? The other processes in my group, for example, Let's say uh, we change it actually. Let me make it like uh, this. Uh, all my processes owned by me can read and write into this memory. The people in my group, their processes can read but not write. And the rest of the processes in the system cannot read or write. They don't have any permissions. So this would be, for example, 
a safer approach. Okay. Anyways, so this is how you uh, create and or open uh, a, a shared memory segment. Uh, you can set the size of the uh, object shared memory uh, segment using the F truncate uh, function. And uh, you can also write to uh, that location, to that shared memory segment, for example, using sprintf. Okay? Actually, anything that takes here a, a file descriptor, uh, you can write there. So, uh, let's uh, have, sorry, uh, let me click here. Let's have a uh, look at this code. This is the implementation, a very simple implementation for the POSIX producer.